And so trust is obviously essential for building relationships. If, if you think about it, we don't often consciously go around thinking, I trust this person, I trust this person. But those people that we have good relationships with, it's because we do actually trust them. Um, people that we distrust, we avoid, we are suspicious of, we don't open ourselves to, etc. So trust is, funda trust is fundamental. And if you want to build a relationship with somebody else, you have to do things that make the other person trust you. So you, and, and again, in the book, uh, we're quite explicit about this, or we encourage people to be explicit. So if I say to Carl, for example, Carl, I will be available on Saturday morning uh, to talk to your, or with your student, and I don't do that, Carl will not trust me next time. So you have to do the things you say you're going to do, and you have to, in a sense, possibly be explicit about that. So I'm saying, Carl, look, Carl, you can trust me because I did it this time, so next time you can be reasonably certain that I will. I mean, it's a silly example, but that's what it's about. It's about a, a, a creating a cycle where people, where you meet the expectations that other people have of you or that you create in the first place. So again, the book encourages you to think about this explicitly rather than just the way we normally do is to go about our lives doing these things but not thinking about them. For the rest, you'll have to read the chapter. <laughs> okay, then. Should we move on to the, the second question for that section, which is about decision making, I think? Yeah, my name is Jane. Uh, yes, I have a question on this topic and this would be the decision making process. Do you stick to your plan and structure, or do you prefer to react? Sorry, again, I didn't catch the last part of that about the decision making process. Oh, I see. Yeah, I mean, again, this is this is this depends on to some extent on your decision making style. This is this is uh, this is covered in the in the book where we we, we look at uh, um, you know different types of of decision makers. So one of the things we ask you to do in the book is to think about yourself. What type of person are you? Are you the sort of person that makes decisions, for example, you need lots of information before you make a decision, you collect all available, you're analytic in other words, or are you the sort of person that you know, is instinctive about your approach to decision making, or uh, what are the other ones we have, um, you know, are you, are you somebody who is, so we call it behaviourally oriented, in other words, are you somebody who in a decision making process you're very aware of the other people in the group and you're and you're um, adapting your behavior to, to them. So, first point is, again, the book asks you explicitly to think about what you're doing. This is, I think, the theme in the, in the, in the, in the book, um, is explicit, making things explicit which are normally implicit. Think about what type of decision maker you are. And to come back to your, your question, then, you need to observe your decision-making style, see when it is successful, see when it is less successful, and you know, be, ne be, be, be willing, if it's necessary, and you realize you're not having success with a particular strategy, to adapt, because that's where the people that, people that are aware of others are, uh, can be more successful, because they can see their reactions and they can adapt their behavior. So I can see that if I talk much longer, one or two of you will fall asleep, so I'll stop there. <laughs> nice piece of adaptation there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, um, right, we're going we're gonna to move swiftly on to the final part, the virtual skills section, okay? Um, I'm sure. And we have a question from Sasha. Sasha. Sasha, you may need to come forward a little bit. One second, yes. Okay, Sasha's in green, bright green, I can see. Yeah, that's right, that's me. Team green. Team green. Hi. So, hello Liam, my name is Sasha. Um, thank you so far for answering our questions and your time. Um, yeah, we uh, were working on your chapter virtual skills, and we have a question there, um, which is, what are the main difficulties in virtual skills? And connected to that, another question just... Uh, which solutions do you offer in your book? 
Um, well, the, the section on virtual schools, um, the reason it's there is, is because increasingly people in business are having to work with or in teams uh, of people that they're not in the same office, city, even country with. So this is, this is the reason why we do this. Now, you may not think of email or telephoning as a virtual skill because you might just think of it as, you know, something that you use. Uh, but actually, in, a, in an international context, email, telephone, video conferencing, whatever, becomes, becomes crucial. So, again, how can you virtually, by which we really mean at distance, how at great distance can you do the things that you would like to, that you would normally do face to face? How can you, for example, deal with conflict at distance? Because you might think, okay, you, you sit down with somebody face to face, you have a good chat, but a, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, a lot of the uh, aspects of that communication, the dimensions, are, are not there in, in 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 virtual communication. I mean, in video conferences to some extent can overcome that, but only to some extent, as we can see now. I mean, we can communicate, we can see each other, but it's still not the same as probably we were if we were in the same room. So that's why we look at these these uh, these 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 dimensions because it is an important part of business. So what can you do? Um, well, again, I think I think that what you need to do with the virtual context is again to to overcome the fact that you can't do a lot of things that you would do face to face. You have to be you have to be much more explicit. For example, you could I mean, depending on culture, you could if you're face to face with somebody, you could, for example, touch somebody on the arm or something, just a small gesture that kind of shows I'm supporting you or, or whatever. You, you can't do that at distance. So how are you going to do it? You've got to be much more explicit in the language you use to say, you know, I support you on this or whatever. Um, so the virtual context forces you to be more explicit about what it is you're doing. I'm supporting you. I understand you. I have sympathy with your situation, etc. Um, and that's kind of what we look at in the book. The chapter on email, I think, is uh, is quite interesting because how can you how can you resolve conflict via email? You know, it, it's more difficult than sitting down face to face. But uh, and one of the tasks that we we do in the book is we ask people to read a quite direct, some people find aggressive email, and we ask you how you would uh, deal with that email in a way that would minimize or remove any conflict. Most people read this email and they get angry. They say, how could you write an email to me like that? No? And what we ask you to do in the book is say, well, as the reader of that email, you also have a responsibility not to create further conflict. Maybe the other person's intentions were good and maybe you're reading it in a negative, in a negative way. So, in a sense, the virtual section is the culmination of everything that's gone before. Everything that's gone before that you would need to do face to face, you need to do a hundred more times when, when you're working virtually because they're the dangers of misunderstanding, of conflict, and of poor decision making are that much greater. Yeah. God. I'm just glad you haven't read the book because it would have been I would never been able to answer your questions if you read the book. Um, Ian, um, I'm going to uh, ask you one last question, um, and it's uh, I'm a typical journalist type question. Isn't it? Uh, what single thing would you most like your readers to take away from your book? Um, I think what. If I could use two words, um, one from Bob and one from me. Bob would emphasize the word, Bob Digner would emphasize the word strategic. He would say, you need to think strategically about your communication and how you go about it in order to reach the goals that you want. I would, I would add to that the word um, explicit. I think, I think the theme that goes through the book is 
being explicit about what you're doing. Now, that may or may not work in all cultures. I think this is a cultural thing, but I think that's the other key word in the book is explicit. Um, so I don't just assume that you can read my intentions. I, I make them clear to you. So strategic and explicit. Yeah, I think by that is we mean is let's take an example of a presentation. When you give a presentation, what is your what is your strategic aim with that presentation? Now, if you ask most people, they don't think about it. They say, "Oh, I want to give a good presentation." But the aim of a presentation is not to give a presentation. Yeah, the aim of a presentation is to achieve some strategic goal. That might be to inform the audience. That might be to persuade the audience. That might be to build trust in the audience. Um, so that's what I think we mean by strategic, is thinking, um, what is it I really want to achieve from this communication? And what steps do I take thinking about that to make sure that I, that I reach that goal? And, and too often we don't, we, don't, we don't think like that. Um, so, uh, I mean, some people don't like this. Some people think this is this is kind of um, you know this is unnatural or or even potentially manipulative to be constantly thinking about what am I trying to do? What goals am I trying to reach? What goals am I trying to reach by by talking to you today? Apart from obviously persuading you all to go and buy the book. But no, but seriously, you know what what do I want to achieve and therefore what steps am I going to take? I think that's what, uh, that's what we mean by strategic, that you're, you're thinking further ahead in terms of your goals and not just trying to get through the particular communication event, uh, whether it's a phone call or a, a presentation. Thank you. That's how, that's how you. Yeah, that's how you build trust in 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 Britain is by supporting the same football team. So Carl and I will never see up like that. But I would be very I'd be very happy to to get any feedback from any of you. Just you you, you have my email address. It's in the book I think and in the magazine. Um, at any time. Uh, till tomorrow afternoon. Okay, all right. Well, have a great time there, and uh, please say hello to anybody you bump into that uh, I may know. And Hi. thanks for um, everybody here in Duisburg. Okay, thank you all very much for your questions and your and your time and attention. Okay, thank you, Ian. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.